Demons are just like people. They leave a bunch of stuff laying around without any thoughts as to how it might result in a lot of negative effects. Isn't it nice to know that we've got so much in common with beings from other planes of existence? It really makes you feel connected to the world around you, doesn't it? Throughout the years, plenty of objects, whether man-made or not, have been considered cursed or possessed or demonic, likely as a result of some demons leaving them behind. So here we go, the top five scary things left by demons. Before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to a new channel that will be posting its very first video very soon, Peach. You guys know Lindsay Ivan, right? She's done some videos here and a bunch of other ones across a whole lot of our other channels. She'll be hosting a bunch of top-notch reaction videos very soon, so make sure you go and subscribe to Peach so you don't miss out. Alright, on with the list. Coming in at number 5, we've got a shadow doll. We've all heard of Annabelle, who is probably the most famous cursed doll going. What other real-life child's toy has an entire movie franchise based on it? Toy Story, maybe, and Child's Play's up there too, but neither of those were based explicitly on real objects. They kind of created their own. At least that's what we've heard from the people who made the movies anyways. Back to the matter at hand though, Annabelle is currently being watched over at Ed and Lorraine Warren's Paranormal Museum. She's locked away in a glass case and shall remain there for the foreseeable future. The stuff Annabelle is known for is pretty gnarly, like moving about on her own and slashing claw marks into the backs of unsuspecting victims. But there is another cursed doll, likely possessed by a demon in the hallowed halls where spooky objects sleep. That's right, the Warrens found another paranormal plaything, although this one doesn't get quite as much attention as our red-headed movie star. Good lord, this thing is hideous. Like, if I were to make a movie franchise about a killer doll, I'd go with this over Annabelle any day of the week. According to the Warrens, this doll was involved in satanic rituals made from black magic using human and animal remains. Some say that anyone who takes a picture of this doll will have their dreams invaded by it. In fact, it's even said that anyone brave enough to look the doll right in the eyes, whether in person or through a photograph, will suffer the same fate. These dreams are more like nightmares, featuring intensely horrifying imagery that either causes a heart attack or makes a person afraid to ever fall asleep again. Previous owners of the doll have claimed to have nightmares and oftentimes even suffered unexplainable injuries. The last folks to house the doll were glad to see it go when Ed and Lorraine showed up, that's for sure. So if you're feeling courageous, look right into these eyes. Do it. I dare you. The image will be right here for the next few seconds. Why not give it a try? suckers. Coming in at number 4, we've got Thomas Busby's chair. Damn, a chair? That doesn't seem too scary. Maybe if it were a throne or something with restraints, but on the surface, this demonic object seems to be a pretty average chair. You know, for everyday sitting. Looks can be deceiving though, as this seat comes with a horrifying curse. Way back in 1702, Thomas Busby was executed. Busby was a man who really liked his personal seating arrangement, so much so that he actually strangled his father-in-law to death for sitting in it. Of course, this act of step patricide was the reason he was executed. Before he was carted off to the funny farm and subsequently snuffed out, Busby made a grand statement. Sit in my chair and die. Apparently he's made good on this promise, even from the afterlife. Now I can't definitively prove this, but supposedly 63 people have sat on this chair since he died, and every single one of them was met with an unfortunate fate. Some died within hours, while others took a little while longer. However, natural causes did not seem to be part of any of these deaths. Now, this is a really nice chair. It stayed sturdy and sittable since the 1700s, which is no easy feat. I can't imagine any of my IKEA furniture will outlive me, or maybe even outlive the decade. Maybe I'm inviting disaster by saying that. Regardless, this chair is still around and has tempted some sitting enthusiasts to try their luck. It currently resides at the Thirsk Museum, where it's now suspended from the ceiling to prevent any would-be chair devils from planting their posterior upon it. Apparently folks who feel a little down on their luck have attempted to take a seat in order to end it all. One has to wonder what kind of deal Busby had to make with an otherworldly power to keep folks off his chair. Coming at number 3, we've got the Bassano Vase. Nobody knows where this vase came from, or who made it, or even what the curse attached to it was. This lack of concrete information didn't stop it from becoming a legend though. Plenty of stories about it conflict, but what we do know is that it is dangerous and deadly. Originating in Italy, apparently it was meant to be a wedding gift from sometime around the 15th century. It was given to a bride-to-be, but before she could get married, she died. Police weren't sure whether it was murder or if there was another cause of death. But they didn't expect the vase. 
Somehow, the Veys made it to another family member and they were met with a similar fate. Soon enough, folks connected the dots and buried it, and it went undiscovered for centuries. However, evil like this does not stay underground for long. In 1988, the vase was rediscovered with a note inside of it, warning that it brought death. Even so, it was auctioned off to a pharmacist. You want to guess what happened to this medicine distributor? They died! Another string of deaths occurred, resulting in the vase disappearing once more. Some claim that the police took it to keep people safe, while others say it's been buried once again. Despite all of this, I'm sure we'll see it again someday. Just hope you're not the one to find it. Coming in at number two, we've got the Woman from Lem statue. Lo and behold, there are more deadly ancient works of art circulating around. Try your best to avoid getting your grubby fingers all over this, all right? This limestone carving was discovered in Cyprus way back in 1878 and has brought nothing but misfortune since. The story goes like this. Four families have owned the statue and each bloodline ended within a few years of taking ownership. That's a bad omen if I've ever seen one. The last surviving member of the final family to take possession of it got spooked, naturally, so they called up the Royal Scottish Museum and begged them to take it off their hands. Or maybe they were a little more slick, you know, donating it under the pretense of charity and taking a tax return. Either way, the woman from Lem ended up in Edinburgh and everyone lived happily ever after. Well, actually, no, they didn't. While most museums manage to store dangerous artifacts full of demons relatively safely, this statue took one more life on its way to harmlessness. The curator who processed the transfer of goods ended up dead shortly after taking the statue. And not just dead by heart attack or brain aneurysm, but by mysterious murder. Who knew limestone could carry such dangerous energy? And finally, at number one, we've got the crying boy painting. When you think of interior design, what do you picture? Some nice staple pieces of furniture, maybe a statement piece or two to keep things funky. Mirrors, photos, maybe a nice lamp. Oh, and when it comes to art, there are a lot of options. However, one option that most people avoid has to be images of crying children. That just doesn't seem to be something that makes a house feel like a home, you know? And for all you folks out there that would normally avoid such a picture, now you've got an even better reason. Your house might burn down if you hang one up. Yep, the painting of a crying boy by Giovanni Bragolin has been involved in all sorts of domestic fires all over the place. Apparently British firefighters kept finding prints of this painting in homes that burned down. The weirdest thing is that these prints were always unscathed. No burn marks, no warping, no deterioration, nothing. Even if the entire house was reduced to ash, the prints still survived and were in pretty good condition. Understandably, the firefighters who found these pictures were freaked out. They wouldn't allow any such picture in their homes and warned their friends and family about it too. Nobody has a solid explanation as to why this painting and its prints would be involved with so many fires, but most folks seem to be okay with just leaving them be for now. We don't need any crying kids in the house anyways. So be careful while thrifting. Even though it's better to reuse older things instead of buying up all sorts of mass-produced crap, you never know what might be cursed or might be left behind by a demon. Trust your gut and don't be afraid to pass up anything that might kill you and your family. So what'd you think of the list? Do you agree with my picks? Have you ever encountered something left by a demon? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more obsolete ones from the top five people who successfully summoned a demon. Kazuma Kun says nobody would be getting so up in arms about something totally harmless. It should be blatantly obvious these days that that is entirely untrue. You're probably right. I do see evidence of this every day. Right in the comments. Carson Claiborne says my aunt and two other people that she knows were playing with the Ouija board and summoned a demon. Ever since then, she's always been followed by one. I'm just surprised it hasn't caught up to her yet. The Phoenix and Wolf Within says, random question. Anyone else see a shadow on a wall coming from nowhere of a tall dude in a suit and a top hat? You might just be seeing the shadow of a Patron bottle. Chris Nunn says, not sure who, but somebody did summon a demon. She's still here living among us. Lucy, or shall I say Lucifer. Be careful now, okay? The last thing anybody needs is more Lucy in their life. And Tildy says, I once summoned a demon to help me play games on my PC. You sure that wasn't just a DRM? Similar to a demon, but not quite. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to drink from the skulls of my enemies, which is not very sanitary. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. It currently resides in the Thrisk, 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 not Thrisk. 
I'm about to sneeze too. It's like kind of like stuck up in there, you know? It's like right here, you can't quite get it. Uh. 